Hello and welcome everybody, it is me Black Country Wargaming and today I'm going to be showing you how to paint up your Viking Warriors. So first up I have the shield already attached, it's quite easy to get in behind it but what I do is base coat the model with a spray can, either any grey spray can you want and it just gives it a nice base coat for the rest of the model. I then start with Lead Belcher from Games Workshop and I just basically cover all the chainmail parts of the model with the Lead Belcher paint. I then use Balthazar Gold again from GW and I paint all the metallic parts that will be bronze or gold. So this is basically the parts on the helmet to distinguish it from the rest, the sword handles and the shield. I then use US Brown from Vallejo Model Air and I use this for any wooden parts so this would be the inside of the shield on this model. Then I use a Leather Brown. Now Leather Brown I use for any wooden parts on axes and javelins or spears. I also use a leather brown across the belts and any other straps that go around the rest of the model. I also have used a Balthazar Gold on the necklace at this point. Charred brown from Vallejo Game Colour I use on any dark browns so this is the boots mainly on this model but also if you're doing dark brown on any cloaks or any trousers at this point. And then I use a random tan from Vallejo for anything that will be a lighter tone of brown. So this is basically like your strappings and your leggings, gaiters, whatever you want to call them, around the legs and if they have some around the arms. Then I completely wash everything in an Agrax Earthshade wash all over the complete model just so as it... Uh, gets in all the recesses. Now we're going to be working on the clothing of the Vikings and clothing of the Vikings is not uniform there are many different variations and colours you can use so I'm going to take you through a few that I have used so the first one up is Ultramarine the next is Death Guard Green a Vallejo Red I use a Vallejo Game Colour Sick Green and when it comes to trousers, I have used Filthy Cape, Banshee Brown, and Monster Brown. You can also use Necromancer Cloak. The whole idea is that you want to change it up as much as possible and give different variations between the clothes across the rest of the models. So if you're doing a big batch of them, what I tended to do was paint four of them with the same colour tops and then paint uh, four different ones with different bottoms so you'll never have a blue one with the same color trousers basically but anyway we move on now to the skin and I use a Bugman's Glow from Citadel just put it all over the skin and then we have hair tones so for hair tones blonde I've used Zandri Dust as you can see here that is a blonde hair tone for brown hair I have used a beastie brown, you could also use a dark brown like a werewolf fur or the charred brown that we had before, you could even use the necromancer cloak if you wanted. And for red hair I have gone for fur brown. Then it comes to the washes, so this is just a selection of washes I've used here. So. Um, if I'd be here all day if I was to show you the each individual part washed but Reichland Flesh Shade is for the skin and the blonde hair Caribou Crimson is for any reds Drakenhoff Nightshades for any blues Green Tone and Military Shade that they are for the different variations of green that you can have on the models Agrax Earth Shade is for any browns and Nuln Oil is for any anything that's going to be like a very dark black colour then when you take the model and you've completely washed it with the relevant wash I then use a Cadian Flesh Tone just to hile up, up the skin and then I go completely over with all the 
tones that we used for the bases. So the red one, I used bloody red. For the green one, I've used a sick green back again. Filthy cape for any of the trousers. Death guard green for any of the lighter greens. Monster brown for the browns. Ultramarine for the blues. And banshee brown for the green trousers. And then you can sort of see in the background the different variations there. You don't have to go back over the anything that you did in Necromancer Cloak. And here is a closer view of everything as it's been highlighted up. And with that, that is it. Then all you have to do is use any white paint that you have on the front of the shield because I will be placing shield transfers there in future. I hope you've enjoyed this video though and found it informative. I shall see you in the next one.